What's going on, everybody? My name is Bendy, and this is Disney Heroes. So, today, we have a new noob guide. I'm going to start the series of noob guides that I do where I'm just going to go through each of the game modes one by one. And um, since Arena is the first game mode that you unlock after campaign, I was going to start with Arena and Coliseum. And as you can see, I'm on my alternate account, which is only level Team 22, and I think it's also in Server 22. Oh yeah, Team 22 and Server Level 22. I love it. Because uh, it's going to be easier for me to show you guys examples of how Arena works at the lower ranks of play. Now, before I begin, I just want to say that this video is not really going to be about team building and synergy and stuff like that. This is just a basic overview of how Arena and Coliseum work as a game mode. I might get into a more like team building and synergy guide video in the future. But if you're expecting a, a team building or a synergy kind of video, that's not what this is. So just so you know, the first thing to know about Arena is it unlocks at level 10, which for most people that are just starting out is pretty much right away. So I'm going to use Arena as my main example for most of what I'm talking about here, uh, because both Arena and Coliseum work in the exact same way. Literally the only difference between Arena and Coliseum is that Arena only has one team that you have to fight and create a defense for while Coliseum has three that you have to fight and create a defense for. That's literally the only difference. Other than that, the two of them are identical game modes that have the same exact rewards, the same exact function, and everything like that. But Arena unlocks first, so that's just the first thing you're going to see after you reach level 10. Oh, and Coliseum unlocks at level 40, before I forget to mention it. So let's just go right on in and check it out. So when you open up Arena for the first time, which for this account is pretty much the first time I've looked at it, um, I've done one fight so far, but how it works is you have five divisions or five tiers I should say. You start out in copper which is where I am currently and each tier has five divisions within the tier so in order to advance through the rankings you have to get through each of the five divisions within copper before you can move on to bronze, do five divisions in bronze, move on to silver, so on and so forth. And the way that you move up in the rankings is just by simply defeating opponents that are higher ranked than you. So if you go in and beat the player that's in first place, you will immediately move into first place in the division. As long as you stay within the top five for, I think it's about like five or six hours or something like that, you'll be promoted into the next copper four, which I'm obviously not there yet because I've only fought one time. Then after you've hit copper one, uh, you'll move on to bronze five and so on and so forth. It kind of just continues in the exact same fashion until you reach all the way up to the last tier, which is challengers. Now challengers is where things get very fun for arena and Coliseum. It's where all of the top players in the game go and they duke it out for the top spot in the challenger league every single month. Uh, I'm going to get into that in a few more minutes, but I got a few more basic things I wanted to talk about. So another thing I wanted to point out with Arena and Coliseum is that in the lower ranks, well, I guess for all ranks, um, but in the lower ranks, you can be demoted if you do not fight for four days. So just make sure that if you are trying to progress through the rankings in Arena and Coliseum, just remember that you need to at least be fighting like every couple of days um, in order to keep up your streak. Um, but if you're an active player, you should be fighting at least like once a day for the quest, uh, which maybe I did already, I don't know, no, I think I did it already. But there's a quest daily for Arena and Coliseum. The Arena one is you fight three times in Arena and then the Coliseum one is just once per day. But another key thing is to update your defenses every so often, but you can only do so once per day. So just keep that in mind. Once you edit your team and press done, you cannot change it again for another day. So I'm just going to do this real quick, just because I have a new top five. We have Bunsen. Woohoo! Uh, I'm just going to use my top five. So I'm going to hit done, and you'll see that I can't change my defense now for another 24 hours. But you want to be updating this. You don't have to update this every day, but like every so often as you get more and more powerful heroes, and uh, just update this every once in a while. While you something to note is there is a number of heroes that are particularly really good on defense and those are heroes that have revive abilities or invincibility abilities and things like that so heroes like Hades, Gaston, Kronk is gonna be really good, Davy is also pretty good for defense heroes like that that have some kind of reviving ability and Megara is also gonna be pretty good especially once you have her uh, shank disc powered up a little bit um, but anyways so heroes with revive abilities, invincibility abilities just 
defensive just stalling abilities are going to really help to have on your defense for arena and coliseum just because it makes it so that you can't be quick fought which will come into play down the line once you do challengers and stuff like that but for the lower ranks i don't think it matters quite as much so just something to think about or just leave in the back of your mind going forward but for now i don't think you're really gonna have to worry about it as like a newer player every day at for me it's 10 o'clock um, i don't know what it is for your time zone it depends on what where you are in the world but um, every single day you're going to get some rewards daily, which for copper is really not going to be that much, but as you get further and further up in the tiers, you'll be getting uh, more and more diamonds and also gold too, because if we look at uh, silver, you're going to be getting diamond or diamonds and gold. So as you progress through the tiers, your rewards are going to be getting better. So this is what you're going to be getting daily at, I think like 10 o'clock or something like that. And you get this for both arena and Coliseum separately. So you'll be able to get, say for, if you're in silver one, you'll be getting 120 diamonds per day for free. So this is a really good way to get free diamonds every single day doing Arena and Coliseum. And then also weekly, once you reach challengers, um, you'll also get weekly rewards based on where you are in your division and how you progress through the ranks. Challengers is a little bit different than how it works for everybody else. Um, the ranking really doesn't matter as much. As long as you are in the top five, you will move on into the next rank. I love Arena and Coliseum. It's probably one of my favorite game modes other than War. War and Arena and Coliseum are definitely my two favorite game modes in Disney Heroes. I think they're really fun. They can be kind of stressful, especially once you get into challengers and stuff. But I don't know. I just love the the competitive aspect of these game modes and uh, trying to counter other teams and things like that. So that's totally up my alley. It's not for everybody. Not everybody is super competitive for anything like that. So I totally get it if you don't really like Arena and Coliseum just because they're too stressful for you or whatever. But uh, I don't know. They're just my personal favorites. Okay, so that is pretty much how it works for everything from copper to platinum. It all works exactly the same way on both arena and coliseum. You just gradually progress as you go, and as you get stronger and stronger, you'll be facing stronger opponents, which means you'll have to deal with countering more heroes and just and getting more creative with your team composition and synergy and stuff like that. After you get yourself into platinum one, that's when the, the real pressure comes into play for you, because what you're gonna have to do is you're going to need to be the number one player in Platinum 1 for the duration of, this, of the promotion timer. So I think it's going to work the same exact way as this does right here. I'll go down to the 5 hour. So once you get into number 1, this timer is going to start. Um, I'm guessing it's probably about 6 hours or something like that. But you must remain at number 1 for the full 6 hours in order to be promoted into Challengers. After that is when the real battle begins which I'm going to switch over to my main account in order to show you how Challengers works a little bit because uh, it'll make things more clear for you. Okay, so now that you have been number one in Platinum 1 and you moved up to Challengers, you're going to start seeing a lot tougher opponents and you're going to see a very different looking screen compared to what we were just looking at. The first thing you'll see is that there is now Challenger Seasons in Arena and Coliseum. They both work exactly the same way. Um, they are four weeks long, and each week you're going to be getting uh, weekly rewards, which are these crates right here that I was uh, showing you guys earlier. Um, and you'll be getting hero chips for the Arena Hero at the moment. Uh, which right now is John Silver. So you're going to be getting hero chips for him. You're also going to get mod upgrades and gold and uh, a few other things that you could get. Uh, so that'll come weekly depending on where you ranked in your challenger division. Another thing you'll notice with these challenger seasons is there is rules now. Um, in week one, which was last week for us, it starts you out in division seven and everybody in all of challenger starts at division seven. So everybody in the entire game that is in challenger is going to be somewhere in Division 7 to start. So the rule for week 1 is always going to be changing monthly. This month it just happens to be Tenacity is disabled, but this remains the same for the entire month for everybody. Um, and then below that you'll notice that you also get bonus points for uh, two different things. Uh, this month it just happens to be uh, for stunned opponents and for HP healed. Um, it changes once a month just like the rule does. After that, depending on where you stand in the rankings of your division here. You'll see the top three are in this silver section here. This is where you want to be in order to move up two ranks, which will move you up into better and better opponents basically, and also better and better rewards. So as long as you can get into the top three here, you're gonna be promoted into 
the two divisions up. If you get into this like goldish bronze section here, you'll move up one division. You'll notice that this is a division five rule. So as long as you get promoted from seven into five, you'll get this other rule which also lasts for the remainder of the month. Um, and then you move up two ranks again, and you're gonna get this other third rule that we haven't seen yet. But this only applies if you reach that rank. So say you were in this division right here, but this is like week one, so you're gonna be in division seven. So say you were in this like bronzy gold section here, um, and you only move up one. While this rule is gonna be here, it's not going to apply to you because you're gonna be in division six. So just kind of keep that in mind. It totally depends on what division you're in. Now, each day you're going to to get a number of keys that you can use to fight in arena and coliseum it varies by week uh, week one you usually only get one key per day some other ones you'll get like three or four per day um, it all depends but you can only use the number of keys that you have to fight per day but these keys don't go away over the course of the week they just keep adding up by the end of the week for the last day you'll have enough keys to fight everybody in the entire coliseum um, as you can see i haven't fought anybody yet well, let's do a fight right now. I'll do an easy one just to show you guys how it all works. So you use a key, you get three fights before you have to use extra fights. So I'm just going to use this team. We're going to go in and fight and uh, hopefully we should win. Except I'm not going to win. All right, this is uh, not working for this example here. Really? Oh man, this is annoying. Okay, so. I'll show you guys what it looks like when I use all of my three fights. Hopefully I should win. All right, so you see I've lost three times here. I don't know why I'm losing this fight. It should be a pretty easy one, but I mean, whatever. Um, so you'll see I used three fights um, and now I'm into my extra fights, which is getting cut off by the screen, unfortunately, but it always kind of does on PC for me. I don't know why. But anyways, you get uh, 13 extra fights per day, and this resets at, um, I think when the day resets, which is 5 a.m. for me, I don't know what it is for you, depending on what time zone you're in, but if you really feel like going hard every single day, it definitely advised that you use all of the 13 extras every day, but you obviously you don't have to, just know that it resets back to 13 every single day. Now, after you use your 13 extra fights, it starts to require diamonds in order to fight more. And every single fight costs 15 diamonds beyond your extras. So if you're really, really struggling and you really want to go hard trying to beat an opponent or getting a better score, you will eventually have to use diamonds to fight in Arena and Coliseum. Obviously you don't have to, but you can. I already said that you can only change your defenses once per day, so that's fine. Oh, so I forgot one more thing I wanted to mention is about how you'll see on the screen the score that you get, which obviously the highest score is the one that wins the division. Anyways, how this all works is for Arena, you get a thousand points just for winning, and then for Coliseum, you get 3,000. And then on top of that, you get the bonus points, which are based on one, how quickly you win. So you get a quick win bonus that can be as high as 750 points, and it just kind of gradually goes down as the seconds go on in the fight. So if you win in like one or two seconds or something like that, you're going to get a 7 750 quick win bonus which is a pretty big boost so those are what you really want to aim for but then um, on top of that you also get the bonus points that were from the rules page so you'll see that I got 35 points for doing some healing I didn't have any stun on my team that I used so I didn't get any stun bonus but if you had a stun bonus that would also appear right here the main thing is you get a thousand points just for winning and then on top of that you just get your bonus points the quick win stops at about 15 seconds so if you get beyond 15 seconds into the fight, you will not get a quick win bonus, but you can still get quite a lot of bonus points. Sometimes it can actually be beneficial for you to have a really long fight. It totally depends on the bonus points and what they just happen to be. Um, I feel like with this month in particular, you could get away with getting a lot of bonus points just by having a long fight. But anyways, that's just something else entirely that has nothing to do with the basics of Arena and Coliseum. But um, if you're truly the best of the best, this may not apply to many of you for a very, very long time, unless you're going really, really hard. If you're able to get yourself all the way up to Challenger 1, the rewards are really good every single day. As you can see, every single day that you're in Challenger 1, you're going to be getting at least 700 diamonds from both Arena and Coliseum. And then weekly, you're gonna get the best chest that you can get. 
So these give you a lot of the hero chips, it gives you quite a lot of the mod power, and I think you get City Watch keys as well, but the rewards are really worth it just to get all the way up into the challengers, and if you get in first, you're like really 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 good at this game because at that point it's really competitive in the challenger one even challenger two gets really competitive but yeah like i said arena and coliseum work exactly the same way the only difference is that coliseum is three teams per fight that's really the only difference so it's a lot more strategizing involved in the uh, coliseum ends of things because you have three teams to fight versus just one so i have a lot harder of a time in coliseum than i do arena personally because i find myself struggling against like say one line in my coliseum and then the other two i win or something like that but either way they both work exactly the same way they both have all the same reward system uh, they all give the same exact rewards, and they both have the separate challenger seasons within themselves. So I think that is about it for Arena and Coliseum. Hopefully that clears things up if you're new on how everything works in Arena and Coliseum. And I wish you luck with your progression through the Arena and Coliseum tiers. And I hope that one day to see you in the challengers if you're in server 1. Yeah, so that's gonna be it. I hope you have a wonderful day, and um, peace. Nitron is almost 3 million tr- holy shit. Evil Queen is now the new background for the really good category. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fuck them up. I love Pooh.